for powerful by the hour this afternoon. It's now a category four hurricane with top winds up to 140 miles an hour. The barometric pressure has fallen all the way to 935 millibars. That's down about 20 millibars in 12 hours, which is a very fast rate of deepening. It continues to move straight toward the west at about 14 miles an hour, right toward the central Bahamas. So it looks as if the central Bahamas are going to get raked with a major hurricane uh, during the nighttime hours tonight, even as this moves on toward the west. So in addition to the very strong winds, uh, 140 miles an hour, we face the possibility of seeing the tides 10 to 15 feet above normal tide levels as the hurricane passes through that area. Now it's about uh, 700 or so miles to Miami and still headed toward the west and the more it comes west without any turn to the north the more concern we're going to be about it. Here's our visible satellite picture just as it gets dark that's why it fades out at the end you can still see the eye wall there with the sun shining on the east eye wall as the sun is setting on the western horizon. Looking at the infrared picture we would point out that this hurricane in the last several hours is structured about as powerfully as a hurricane can be. We have the eye right in the middle of the central dense overcast which surrounds the entire eye. No sign of this letting up now. So we're looking at a hurricane that's already a category four. Andrew was category four. Hugo in 1989 was category four. The hurricane that came into Miami in 1926 was a category four with about the same pressure this one has now, 935 millibars. So if that pressure falls more, we wouldn't be very far from a Category 5 hurricane. So we do have out tropical storm warnings for the southeastern Bahamas. The reason they're tropical storm warnings, not hurricane warnings, is that the center of the hurricane is expected to pass to the north, but not so in the central Bahamas. The central Bahamas uh, looks as if we're going to sustain a direct hit, and that includes Cat Isle and Eleuthera and some of those islands in there. And then we have a hurricane watch that includes Nassau, Andros Island, uh, Grand Bahama, and no warnings or watches out yet for any place in the United States, but there's a good chance, we think, that we will see some uh, hurricane watches or warnings for Florida either later tonight or tomorrow. This is the forecast track of the hurricane, and this is where it's forecast to be on Wednesday morning. Bear in mind, though, that it could be this far or this far. Once you get out 72 hours, the error becomes much larger. In any case, what we expect to see happen is this west movement gradually to turn to a northwest movement, bringing the coast, uh, the uh, center very close to the Florida coast. And whether it's going to be right over the coast or just off the coast, we can't really say yet. We have this uh, ridge of high pressure that still prevails to the north of it, and that is going to allow this westward movement to continue. Once this trough gets far enough east over here, we expected to pull it toward the north, but the trough is coming in rather slow. So that's it for this time. Stay tuned uh, throughout tonight for information. And now back to Kim in the studio. Well, it's back to Paul. Thanks, uh, John Hope. We'll have more at the top. It has the attention of people along Florida's Atlantic coast. They are.